This is The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's time where we go through the pages of national dailies. We call it Off the Press. We have Tunde Kolawale. He's a legal practitioner. Tunde, I was hoping that you'd be at the NBA conference. <laughs> yes. After this uh, newspaper reviews, I'll be joining my colleagues there. All right, then Tunde, let's start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. We'll be going through uh, the big stories on our papers. Uh, but first of all, the leadership is uh, a point of core. Ahead of campaign season, Atiku Obi Shatima orders test ground at the NBA conference. As bold caption underneath, you have several riders. 2023 about character and competence. Obi Shatima. I will unite Nigerians against insecurity and bad economy. Others. That's what Atiku is quoted to say. The nice plan to hand over federal universities to states. Uh, that's also got people talking. Like, really? How far, uh, you know, uh, are we faring with a state university in terms of management where they are under the poor view of the state government, especially when state government have state-owned universities? Uh, that's on the one hand. Underneath Nigerians' one issue-based campaign, Yaga Africa is quoted on that. Federal government promises to release trapped $464 million foreign airline funds. That's also another caption this morning on uh, the leadership. IGP Commission on Collision Course Over Fresh Police Recruitment. Federal government introduces vaccine to fight 50,000 diarrhea deaths annually. And just before we move away from the leadership, Odinga challenges poll result in Kenya Supreme Court. Mm. Strike, reconsider your stand, federal government tells us, especially when you have Nasu and uh, Sanu calling off that strike. Again, uh, you find gunmen kill hotelier, abduct friend in Quara. The headlines on the leadership this morning. All right, uh, let's move over to the punch this morning. And of course, as we've been looking at with our uh, uh, top trending segment, the Nigeria Bar Association 62nd Annual General Conference uh, is taking center stage. Uh, it could be regarded as a successful one. The front page picture of uh, the punch gives attention and space to that with uh, the president of the NBA, Lumida Akpata, uh, with some of his colleagues, and you have the representatives of uh, the different political parties, Shatima for the APC, Abubakar for the PDP, and Obi for Labour Party right there. Also the governor of Edo State amongst those uh, there. Ngozi, uh, uh, Chiriman Ngozi Adichie also there as well. In the picture you can see she also gave a speech. Um, but the front page headline, the big one there, uh, with the kicker, insecurity, economic crisis, and the headline, Atiku Obi Islam Federal Government, Shatima sells Tinubu's candidacy, is the big one, the writer, so that story. Everything negative, uh, situation pathetic, worst ever. PDP, Labour Party, presidential candidates. Our hand over federal varsities to states, says Atiku, angry youth, fault ex vice president. Nation in disarray, Chimamanda Dichi and Tinubu hit the ground running. Shatima, uh, are the writers to that headline. More from the punch. NNPC eyes 422 billion now from six. IOCs in August. Lawyers use Buhari, others over NDDC management. Uh, Asunek decides on strike Sunday. So, as usual, we'll be waiting with bated breath for the outcome of that meeting. All firms owe banks of 5 trillion naira amid losses and theft. We have reps summon TCN over $33 million payment to Genco. Uh, 570 million naira debt contracted to sue Oshu over airport. Building collapse, Lagos orders probe police arrest engineer. Olubadon's, Olubadon fumes as hoodlums invade palace disrupt ceremony. Uh, some of the headlines on the front page of The Punch. While away from The Punch, we have the Daily Trust newspaper. And 2023, Hatiko Shatima will be profile solution to Niger's challenges. Uh, that's how uh, the Daily Trust captions it, boldly written underneath to several riders. I will attract local foreign investment in health and education. 
uh, former Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and also Presidential Candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Alaji Atiku Abubakar. You should vote for competence, that's what the Labour Party candidate tells citizens. We'll lead our troops to front lines, APC running mate, was quoted to say. Away from that, Chakarao punctures Kwankwesel's claims and leaves supporters guessing, maybe, just maybe. Uh, he probably might just leave. Scores of terrorists killed as NAF jets hit Shakao's successor's enclave. And just before we move away again, the NPF and PCS clash over constables' recruitment. How Dari's, uh, Darier's pardon stares anxiety in plateau political landscape ahead of 2023 elections. Federal government introduces rotavirus vaccine to avert 111,000 children's death. Accidented vehicle flood Nigerians market as cost of Tokumbo increases by 100%. These are the headlines on the Daily Trust newspaper. Right, uh, let's go over to the nation with these headlines. Uh, of course, the nation also gives uh, attention with its uh, picture story there on the front page uh, to the NBA annual general conference uh, but you have the big one there Tinbo Atiku will be roll out plans on economic security and it's interesting the the take the nation has on this they didn't say Shatima Atiku will be they said Tinbo Atiku will be which means that um, in protocol by protocol Tinbo actually was at that event it was only represented by uh, his vice uh, it says Tinbo Atiku will be roll out plans on economy security Shatima, APC Standard Bearer, and I will replicate our Lagos Bono feats. Um, Nigeria's unity, power, devolution, non negotiable, says PDP candidate and Labour Party flag bearer, promises to transform Nigeria to a productive economy. More from the nation. Why I dumped NNPP by Shekarao? Seems that uh, he's moving uh, uh, you know, parties faster than Cristiano Ronaldo. Is changing clubs, or uh, should I say, Obama Yang. Uh, scores of militants killed as NAF jets hit Iswap's camp in Sambisa. A lawyer, EFCC, can probe states' accounts, finances. Uh, some states have uh, something that, you know, some sort of judicial um, uh, clause that uh, doesn't seem to not allow the EFCC to investigate them. Uh, we have more from the nation. Tribunal grants Oyotola APC access to poll materials. Uh, let's see how that plays out with the tribunal over there. No work, no pay rule. NLC backs ASU on salary arrears. Uh, this is talking about um, the the rules of engagement as far as uh, uh, the civil service are concerned. We have um, that, that clause or section 42 saying that, you know, if you go on strike, you're not meant to, you know, you're not meant to receive your pay and everything. Uh, but the NLC seems not to be agreeing with the federal government. We have BOI, Nexim, okay, 101 billion now for real sector funding, says CBN, uh, are some of the, the headlines on the front page of uh, Nation. Well, we have Tunde Kolawele who joins the conversation this morning. Tunde, thank you once again for making our time to be part of the show. Thanks for having me. It's always a delight being on the platform with you. All right, let's leave it open to you now. Which of the headlines interest you as we went through the pages of the National Dailies? Well, let me start uh, from my primary constituency, which is the Nigerian Bar Association. Our annual conference, which would have held in Sokoto State, but which had to be postponed due to the killing of uh, uh, the lady student at the College of Education in Sokoto for blasphemy is eventually holding in Lagos. And um, it's been a well-planned uh, conference and the attendance um, very, very encouraging. And as you would have seen yourself, most of the leading presidential candidates of the different political parties are uh, the gathering to sell their candidacy. If they are fine times over there, I would think it's um, a measure of the respect that they have for the Nigerian Bar Association. And of course, too, Chimamanda Adichie is there, one of our best writers 
one of the best writers to ever come out of Africa, is also at that com. She's also at that conference, and she has delivered uh, a lecture. From the paper she has delivered, she has uh, touched on the fact that the nation is in disarray, and I tend to agree with her in all ramifications. Whether you look at the economy, whether you look at security, whether you look at infrastructure, whether you look at the coherence, the cohesiveness, the unity that used to exist between all the different tribes in Nigeria, all those things are no longer there. How we are going to get our acts together in the area of education and some of these that I've mentioned is a very great challenge to all those politicians who are at that conference. Thank God they are there. They have listened to a neutral opinion, an opinion from a lady who is not affiliated to any political party. And if I were them, I would take a cue from what she has said and get more prepared to make Nigeria work for, for all. Also important, uh, or something significant, uh, could also be said to have happened. Uh, rather than attend, Ashi Wajibola Amir Tinubu has chosen to send his erroneum to that conference. I don't think that is appropriate. If you could go to General Lucia Gohaba to solicit his support, I don't see any reason why he will shy away from attending a far bigger platform than that which exists as a presidential uh, uh, house or palace or whatever you call it in Abelkuta. I mean, the impression that people will get from his absence is that he's got something to hide. All right. Do, do you feel that, um, I mean, don't you think it's, it's better for you, because uh, I'm sensing that this must be, uh, your view may be, the general mood at that um, annual general conference there, uh, with lawyers saying, hey, why, why would you not come and speak to us? Are we not good enough? But it, it, don't you think it's, it's best to hear from the man, to know whether he was even in, in good health, whether he had a family emergency, or some other thing that may have prevented him from coming? Before concluding. Mm -hmm. Well, you and I will know that uh, a few days ago he was in Abel Kucha to meet the Olusha Gobas and just to solicit his support. And it was on the front page of all the papers in the country. And so many other stories have even been generated from that uh, visit. So if you could make it to Abel Kucha, which is further several kilometers away from Lagos, I don't think why it should be difficult to attend the NBA conference here in Lagos, except maybe he's out of the country. And if he's out of the country, he would have been invited much earlier than the time that the conference is taking place now. He ought maybe probably to have rescheduled his um, uh, travel abroad, if by chance he's not in the country. I'm of the opinion now, it doesn't speak good of him to be absent at that conference. The Shetima that they have sent is beginning to get a lot of flat uh, from the Nigerian people, especially from the social media commentators. A lot of people have started to ridicule him because of the attire he wore to that uh, conference. His uh, jacket appears to be oversized. He also wore a red uh, tie. Red ties are not what is usually seen at the conference or in the gathering of lawyers. So, but Tunde Kala, Wale, you should, should that yeah. even matter? I mean, at this point in time, should it really matter? You know, are we now going to be talking about how people are dressed? Should that really be, uh, you know, the crux of the conversation? Does it really, really matter? No, it doesn't as such, but it's a matter of protocol. Uh, it's a matter of protocol, which is universally observed. If, for example, you are a lady, you are going to meet Sheikh Gumi, it will not be advisable, for example, not to cover your head 
with a soul or a scarf or whatever, in due respect or in due difference to the Sheikh Mahmoud Gumi, protocol, customs, values, and whatever are what uh, people should uh, pay some attention to. All right, Tunde Kolawale, let's move away from that now. Right. Uh, let's get to Africa, especially with the elections that happen in Kenya. And uh, you have Real Odinga, who's not really agreeing to it and challenging, uh, you know, the results right there at the Supreme Court. What do we make of this, uh, um, you know, courts kind of elections where uh, you have elections being conducted? It's something that's also very common in our polity. You have those who actually contest this election, approaching the court, you know, to get a different result. And uh, I'd like to share your thoughts on this. Yeah, Messi, what this tells us is that uh, African leaders and African politics is the same all over the continent. You have politicians all over the continent who don't want to play by the rules. You have politicians who don't sell themselves and their programs to the people and allow the people to make a free choice, to vote freely based on the program presented to them. Rather, most times, all African leaders who want to rig the elections, compromise the integrity of the election by the electorate to vote for them. I have been following the Kenyan election. Almost everything that is associated with the Nigerian politics, with the Nigerian electoral process, are also being replicated, or are also seen with the election that has just been taken place in Kenya. And then, after you have wasted billions of uh, dollars, Naira, or whatever, running the election, the politician again will run to the court to file a petition, either to obtain the election, or to use the courts to get themselves into offices for the court to declare themselves as the winners, which has very serious implications. One of the implications is that um, when it is the court that now declares who wins an election, it means that the free will, the powers of the electorate to elect their own leaders has been hijacked. Secondly, when politicians go to the courts to file petitions, the courts have been politicized. And when the court gets politicized, then it's no longer the neutral arbiter that it ordinarily really ought to be. We need divine intervention in the whole of Africa. We also need good men, good people, young people, to really begin to steer the direction for good election, for integrity, for politicians who will respect, who will respect the wishes of the people. Sadly, this is not where we are seeing presently. And I want to appeal and enjoy the Supreme Court in Kenya not to allow what happened in the previous election in Kenya to happen again because there was a breakdown of law and order and more than 5,000 people were killed after the last elections in Kenya. And in fact, some of the contestants in the present election that took place, in the election that took place in Kenya recently, have cases or cases at the International Criminal Court because of the killing that took place in Kenya during the previous presidential election. May that not happen again this time around. All right, so let's look at, let's look at the uh, headline on the front page of leadership uh, still uh, regarding ASU. Um, it says uh, the federal government has called on the striking union uh, to reconsider its, its stand. This is a new one uh, this week. I think we should have an ASU segment every week. Um, but this is, <laughs> but the federal government, the paper, paper says, has called on uh, ASU to reconsider the plights of Nigerian students who have stayed at home for six months and call of the strike. Minister of State for Education, uh, Honorable Goodluck Nana Opia, made the call in Oweri, the paper says, while speaking with journalists, Opia maintained that the, uh, the federal government had met all the demands made by ASU, but noted that the only outstanding issue was government's no work, no pay policy. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? 
Um, you see, if one sees or looks at what the politicians are doing all over the country on a daily basis, it will be difficult to sell that kind of an idea to the ASO people. Not too long ago, the Akata General of the Federation was alleged to have embezzled or stolen about 90 billion naira. Furthermore, you will recollect what Minowo was, I mean, did with uh, the pensions uh, fund. If you also look at what is happening in the National Assembly and the kind of security votes that the governors, that uh, the president, the vice president, the local government chairman, the commissioners are appropriating to themselves on a daily basis. If you are a member of ASO, you will not want to accept the proposal that you should seize the sword and take whatever is thrown on your table. With what we see, with what we read on a daily basis, the impression one gets is that they see a lot of money in the system, but that these monies are not being spent in the direction in which it should be spent. We should be education, we should be health, we should be infrastructure, we should be uh, women, we should be in creating employment for all Nigerians, for more than 33% of Nigerians who no longer have a job to do. So, I want to say, as you may not buy into that, but again, you know my position. These are these, they are two people. My advice has always been to them that look, struggle for good governance in this country. Struggle for good governance at the local government level. Struggle for good governance at the state level. Get good governance at the federal level. It is only when you have good people in power that the resources of the nation can be prudently managed. And right. then education yeah. we, 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 yes. and all places we of have, our we life have to go to the will be competently and adequately taken yes. care of. Yes. Th thank you, sir. We, we have to go. I apologize because um, of, of time. All right. Yeah, but uh, th thank you for, for, for expertly answering the question uh, raised. Yeah. And, of course, we, we would have more opportunities to to discuss uh, this atom as matter for I look for we look forward to having you next week right. on, on this same segment and uh, of course uh, we might we might drop by uh, to join you at that conference uh, all uh, right Tunde Kolo is a legal practitioner usual guest on uh, of the press every week right here on plus TV Africa we'll take a break now and when we return we uh, dive straight into our first major conversation we have uh, a look at what happened today in history on the program and then we'll be right back please stay with us